Hello, welcome to our session. This is choosing the right Google Compute Engine instance type for your workload. My name is Hanan Youssef. I'm a product manager on Google Compute, Ma on Google Compute Engine. Um, and today, during this session, I'll be walking you through the different virtual machine types available on our platform, as well as the new infrastructure announcements that we're making today during Next 2019. I'll focus on describing the different options available to you, the capabilities of the new instance types and the new VMs, and also we'll walk through some guidelines to help you make decisions about the right VM infrastructure for your workload. I hope that by the end of the session, you will have a clearer picture of the different VM types available, and I hope you will find it easier to pick the right infrastructure for any workload that you bring to Google Cloud. Before we start, we want to let you know that we do have a Dory for the session. So please feel free to go to the next application and add any questions you have for us. We'll have some time to answer any questions you have in the Dory at the end of the session. So let's start by talking about the applications that you are running today on the cloud. I'm sure if I ask this room, we'll come up with a list of 100 or possibly more different application types different workloads and different architectures that you're looking to run on GCP or on your cloud provider. Some of you might be focused on running high performance web applications. Others might be looking for ways to run your ERP systems efficiently in the cloud. Or maybe you're simply looking for the ability to burst to the cloud and finish a job that you have at the moment that you're thinking about a batch job. So how easy do you find the process of matching your needs to the capabilities provided by your cloud provider? Do you find it easy to find the right VM type at the right cost with the right performance in the right locations that you're looking at? Do you find it sometimes confusing to look through a very big and large catalog of instance types with different features and capabilities and find it difficult to compare them? I bet you do. I personally sometimes find it very confusing to look through all of these options available. I think one thing that also makes this a more complex question for us to answer is the fact that your workloads are typically not stable. What you start with might need to change. Your performance requirements might change, your budget might change, and we need to figure out how easy it is for you to make these changes as you get them. We believe that this should be simple. This is why in GCP from day one, we really focused on taking a very different approach to our instance types. We understand that you need simplicity so that your decision making is easy and effective without requiring you to have a PhD in our catalog or study that for hours. We know that you need flexibility because your needs change, because your requirements come up every day, new requirements come up every day as your profile workload or as your business grows and you need different requirements or different resources, for example. We've also prioritized efficiency as one thing we always look at when trying to introduce new capabilities into our infrastructure. And efficiency is very important over here because on the cloud, you shouldn't need to overbuy. You shouldn't need to overprovision. You should find something that fits exactly what you're looking for and what you're going to benefit from. So let's look at this process in more details. How do you actually pick the right VM shape on Google Cloud? How do you match your exact needs to that available from our platform? We believe that for 90% of your workloads, this should be a very simple process where you need to do no comparisons and you need to find what you're looking for with exactly one click. And this is why we've really focused on having that as one of our core pillars as we created our general purpose VM. We wanted to make them simply, truly general purpose. They are designed to be simple, flexible, and fit the majority of your workload. And we do that in many ways. First of all, we focus with our general purpose VMs on giving you flexible sizing. You can simply choose the number of cores and the amount of memory that you need at any point of time and with the ratio that you're looking for. You don't have to choose from only predefined shapes, which might map to some workloads we have in mind that might not necessarily be exactly what you're looking for. With the general purpose machine types, you can choose more memory, more cores, or you can choose a balance. 
And what's very important in this process is that you don't need to think or worry about pricing changing in strange ways as you cho change those ratios. So by having a very simple and linear pricing for both cores and memory, that becomes one less decision you need to think about and one less factor you need to consider. It's one simple pricing that you can have across the board. What's also very important about the general purpose machine types is that with custom machine types, with the custom machine types available on Google Cloud Platform, right sizing becomes something that you can actually do on the cloud so that you don't over provision and you get exactly what you're looking for. Let's talk about custom machine types. As you can see here, these sliders are actually part of uh, what I like most about Google Compute Engine. Simple sliders that allow you to just configure the machine type to what you have in mind and what exactly fits what you're looking at. With custom machine types, you can build an exact fit. And you can prevent any wasted resources. And we've seen our customers use this feature to actually benefit from more than 19% savings versus just using predefined instances that are available, including predefined instances available on Google Compute Engine itself. Another great way that custom machine types help you is that it provides you with something that we call extended memory. And extended memory is really meant to break any barriers you have to creating the exact shape you're looking at. So for example, let's take an example of a workload that has very expensive per core requirements. On any cloud, you would typically have to choose the memory that you're looking for and you get a predefined amount of cores available with that, and then you will have to pay the licensing for all your cores. You don't have any choice. With extended memory, you can actually figure out the amount of memory that you need, and then decrease the number of cores that you're buying with the VM, so that you don't have to pay for extra licensing that you don't actually need. Another great thing about custom machine types and about the general purpose VMs is that we're also Aside from giving you the ability to create the exact fit shape that you're looking for, we also try to help you with that decision and help you with figuring out what the right number and the right fit is. We do this through the right sizing recommendations. So if you've been on the Google Cloud console recently, you might have seen a screen that looks like this one. And what this screen shows you is our own recommendation and the platform intelligence that we make available to you so that you can figure out if what you're running today is really the most efficient way to run your workload. On the top here, for example, I have an 8 vCPU VM that I'm not fully utilizing. And because of that, Google Compute Engine right away gives me a recommendation that I can actually downsize to a different VM and directly save more than $150 per month. In many ways, this is meant to give you the ability so that with custom machine types and with the right sizing recommendation, you get the exact fit and you avoid overspending on infrastructure resources that you don't need. Another thing which is really significant and great about general purpose VMs is that they give you a lot of flexibility to change the attachments that you add to those VMs. A great example is storage. So on a typical day, you might think coming into the cloud that you need locally attached storage to be able to get the performance that you're looking for. Maybe a few days later, after some performance testing, you see that you actually don't need all that performance and you prefer to have something that's network attached and um, more durable for your critical data. In a typical case, you would have had to change your entire VM type, choose a different one that has local storage or not local storage. With Google Compute Engine, we try to make that a much easier process so that you can just have a VM running on GCE and go and change the storage mode or the storage type that you're using with this VM. As you can see here, you can choose the local SSD, you can choose persistent disk, which is network attached, and you can even choose among the different types of persistent attached disks that are available to you. The main goal of thinking about our infrastructure this way and presenting it this way 
is that we simplify the process of decision making and we simplify the process of operations for him. This applies to a lot of things across Google Compute Engine. A couple of examples um, have to do with how we manage CPU platforms and GPUs. We simply believe that there are decisions you shouldn't have to spend time on. And there are things that an intelligent cloud platform should be able to do automatically for you. One clear example is managing the hardware upgrade cycle. Maybe for some of your workloads, you do care about understanding the underlying CPU architecture and optimizing your code for it. You might be using certain instruction sets, for example. However, from our experience, we've seen that most of the time, you actually don't need to worry about that and you don't need to think about it. You just need something that runs and runs well on the cloud. And for these cases, we give you the ability to choose a minimum CPU platform. As you see in the screen under CPU platform, this is Intel, Skylake, or later. And what that means is that by simply choosing this box and choosing that option, you give us the ability to manage the, hub, the hardware upgrade cycle on your behalf so that we can continue to move you to the more recent infrastructure, more efficient infrastructure, as this becomes the most appropriate one for, for us to use and for you to use without you having to go and do any work. You don't stop the instance, you don't recreate another one. It simply upgrades on your behalf. If we're talking about flexibility, another thing that we believe helps you with general purpose VMs is the ability to choose different accelerator types. You might have been using K80s, for example, at a certain point of time, but now want to experiment with the new T4 GPUs. You don't need to go and rebuild your entire infrastructure. Again, you can remove one GPU and add another, and you're set to go without having to go back and figure out if, for example, the perfect shape that you've been recommended also exists with the GPU instances. So to summarize for the general purpose VMs, we covered how a wide variety of options and of workloads are available with those general purpose VMs. We talked about how they enable you to run things that might be very different and have different resource requirements by changing the amount of cores and memory that you have available um, across different workloads from databases to web applications, mobile gaming, and dev and test environments. We also discussed the great flexibility you get with general purpose VMs. You don't have to spend a lot of time trying to research or compare the instances. You get custom machine types, which enable you to create an exact fit for your workloads. And even if finding the exact fit is not a right task, you get recommendations that enable you to do that. This makes general purpose VMs great for a wide variety of workloads and makes them really a very simple way to get started without having to rethink or to look through a very large catalog of instance types options and compare them. We've seen our customers make great benefit of these features and these capabilities and tell us a lot of times how custom machine types really enabled them to change their economy, to change the economy of running their infrastructure and spend their money and their focus on their operations, on what really matters. Now let's talk about bursty workloads. Many Google Cloud customers look for a better option to run more cost-sensitive and bursty jobs when they need to. This can be the kind of job where you just need to um, run thousands of cores, for example, for a very short period of time on the cloud so that you complete a certain task you have in mind. A good example here is rendering jobs, for example. We see a lot of studios coming to GCP so that they run a long running, a big rendering job, get the task done in a very short period of time by leveraging thousands of VMs at one time. Typically, these workloads only care about the time it takes for them to complete. They might not essentially care about this being a real-time process where they are interacting with their customer in every step of the way. And I'm sure that you would agree that economics become a very big part of this decision. When you're looking to run tens of, tens of thousands of VMs for a very short period of time, you really don't want to be spending too much for that. For these cases, preemptible VMs is GCP's recommended solution. 
Preemptible VMs are made for batch, checkpointed, and high throughput computing. They are simply short running VMs that can run for up to 24 hours and can be preempted at any point of time. And with those constraints, they become 80% cheaper for you to run. The great thing about these VM types is that they are actually not a separate VM type. It's just a flag that you can add to any instance at any point of time. You don't have to go and redo your research or think about some capabilities you might be missing if you chose preemptable VMs, for example. This makes them ideal for a variety of workloads, from genomics to computational chemistry to data processing and simulations. The greatest thing about them is that you get directly 80% off, which is a fixed discount. You get predictable pricing without having to face any unpredictability into this process. As long as you have jobs that are full tolerant and can manage preemption, you directly get this benefit. Again, we've seen many GCP customers make great use of this capability. Many of them run tens of thousands of cores and tens of thousands of VMs while saving money, an equation which is typically not very easy to solve. Now let's move to a different workload. Let's talk about gaming as an example. Multiplayer games specifically are a great example of a compute intensive workload. We see typically AAA titles looking for the fastest and best experience they can present to their end customers. For these companies, frame processing time is critical. If that ended up happening slower than expected, then their players, the gamers, would actually notice that their game is not performing as expected and it would impact their experience. This is why we've been working for a very long time on introducing the new compute optimized VMs, which is one of the new instance types that we've announced today during Next 2019. Compute optimized VMs simply provide the highest per core performance on GCP. They are the best fit for compute intensive workloads that might include AAA gaming, high performance computing, and a lot of very high performance websites and applications. These instances provide more than 40% higher performance for workloads that are compute bound and care about single threaded perf. What's great about those VMs is that with this new introduction, they are actually powered by the latest CPU architecture available on the market. So these are powered by the new Intel Scalable processors, the second generation, codenamed Cascade Lake, and they offer the highest frequency available on GCP with up to 3.8 gigahertz in all core turbo. Let's talk a little bit more about compute optimized VMs. As you can see, they already come with multiple shapes and options. So today, they range from 4 to 60 vCPUs, from 16 to 240 gigabytes of memory, offering you a 4 to 1 gigabyte per vCPU ratio. They also enable you to manage or use multiple storage options. So you can use network attached storage, persistent disk, or you can use local SSD, local storage, as with any other GCE instance. We're also happy that we are introducing these VMs with the new networking caps that we have available that were announced today. So they offer directly up to 32 gigabits per second. And going beyond the shapes and the hardware, we've really focused on making the compute optimized VMs the best option for you when you have near real time and highly demanding workloads. So these VMs, you get full transparency into the underlying hardware. You get explicit NUMA visibility so that you get the best performance across the different VM types and different VM sizes. You also get very tight consistency 
and very predictable performance so that you can bet your most intensive applications on those VMs. For those of you that are looking to do more fine tuning of your performance, you also get access to things such as the processor power state so that you can fine tune your application performance on those VMs. So to summarize what we covered for compute optimized VMs, these are one of our new introductions to GCP as we look to cover more of the edge cases that you might have for your different workloads. They have the highest performance per core available on Google Compute Engine. They are powered by the latest Intel second generation scalable processors and go up to 3.8 gigahertz in all core turbo. In addition, they have minimal variability very high consistency, and offer you multiple shapes so that you can find the one thing which is looking for and fits your workload. This makes them a great fit for multiple applications, including multiplayer gaming, high-performance computing, video encoding, real-time web serving, and others. Now let's move to some of the other highly demanding workloads different types of highly demanding workloads. One great example here might be databases, specifically high-end databases. We see a lot of customers running large ERP systems, for example, SAP ERP systems. And what they are looking for typically is the fact that as their database continues to grow, they are looking for an infrastructure that will grow with them and will be able to scale with their needs. While they think about this, they are also looking for an infrastructure that continues to give them the benefits of running on the cloud, the flexibility that comes with that, and the ability to have higher fault tolerance, and many of the great features that we talked about. This is where the memory-optimized VMs come into the picture. And the way we really define memory-optimized VMs on Google Compute Engine is that they are the large memory VMs, one terabyte and higher. These typically tend to be multiple socket systems, very large systems, and tend to have a very high amount of memory per core so that they can continue to scale with your memory needs. Memory optimized VMs are built for memory intensive workloads, including in memory databases and in memory analytics. They provide the highest gigabyte per core available on GCP with options that range from 15 to 24 or 25 gigabytes per vCPU. And they also offer you the lowest dollar per gigabyte available with these configurations. Multiple shapes are available for you under the memory optimized VM category ranging from 1.5 terabytes up to the six and 12 terabyte VMs that we just announced today and with plans to even extend up to 18 terabytes and more. If you're thinking about how the infrastructure continues to scale with your database and scale with your needs, then one of the things we've really had as one of our guiding principles for those VMs is the speed at which we've been trying to add new sizes and continue to scale with your requirements. So you can see here that in approximately the last 18 months, those VMs have increased in sizing by more than 10x for the number of cores they provide and 60x for the amount of memory available on those VMs. My favorite part about memory optimized VMs though, is that they continue to give you all the benefits of Google Compute Engine that we've just described. So they are fully flexible and they provide you with very high availability. Let's talk about availability. With memory optimized VMs, you continue to get live migration, supporting zero downtime for your most critical applications. And for those of you not familiar with live migration, it's simply our way of making sure that maintenance events are transparent to your workloads. When Google Cloud expects that or sees the, that a maintenance event is about to happen, we transparently spin up another version of your VM, copy all the data over so that you don't have to experience any downtime or impact on your application. 
And this continues to be one of the things that we keep as a core part of infrastructure as we expand to more sizes. Another thing here is flexibility. If you're running the type of deployment and the type of workload where you expect your requirements to change months over months, then you definitely don't want to be stuck into a reserved size, where moving to a different size requires a different contract or a different commitment. And this is why the commitments that we provide for memory-optimized VMs are really just for memory-optimized VMs. You can use the same commitment for one, for a one terabyte VM. You can add to that and use it for four terabyte VMs, or you can divide it across different VMs as you scale out or scale up. It's really up to you. It's one big category that you can divide it the way you see fit, as you scale up or as you scale down. Another great thing about memory-optimized VMs is the simplicity. These are native GCP VMs, native Google Compute Engine VMs. They fully support all the Google Compute Engine features and capabilities. You use them directly from the console, from G Cloud, from the API. You can use labels. You can use any other features that you're using today, including the policies, for example, that you have defined for your organizations and manage them exactly as any other small VM available as part of your deployment. The last part I'll mention about the memory-optimized VMs is our focus on making sure that we introduce new innovation as we continue to expand our sizing. A great example of that is the support for the latest memory technologies. And you might have recently seen some announcements from Google Compute Engine where we talked about Intel Optane DC persistent memory. This technology is specifically useful for those of you who have been seeing a gap between the cost and the performance available from DRAM and that available from flash or from SSD. If you have applications that require better performance than storage, but cannot, you cannot afford to have them running on DRAM due to the cost associated with that, then this fits in, into that gap over there. As you can see, it fits in that place between memory and storage. The other great thing about this technology is that it also gives you the availability or the ability to have persistent memory so that for certain applications, the application going down doesn't mean that you actually lose all of your data even though you get the performance, or a performance that's very close to that, that you get with DRAM. Google Cloud has done a lot of early work with this technology and focused on availing it first so that you can test it on our platform. With that, we give you much higher density per VM than that which can only be available with the regular memory technologies. Approximately 4x more memory at a significantly lower cost. It tends to be much faster and lower latency than storage, and is a great fit for in-memory databases across the board. Today, we do have in our alpha testing programs a few shapes available where you can test Intel DC persistent memory for yourself and add with a small node, with a 96 vCPU node, up to 6.7 terabyte across DRAM and obtain DC persistent memory. If you have workloads where you don't need the performance of DRAM and you want to leverage the TCO improvements, this might be a great fit for your testing. So let's summarize the different instance types we've covered. We talked, how, we talked about how with Google Compute Engine, you get very flexible general purpose VMs. General purpose VMs tend to be the most flexible and the most simple to use. They are great for a wide range of workloads across web serving, databases, gaming, and others. They also give you the ability to right size the VM to exactly what you're looking for you get recommendations that help you with making sure that you're picking the right size. They are very flexible and enable you to directly attach or, deta de or detach accelerators or storage options. Then we covered the compute-optimized VMs. 
one of the new things that we're introducing on Google Compute Engine for your very performance intensive workloads. Compute optimized VMs offered the highest performance per core available on GCP. They are a great fit for AAA gaming, HPC, high performance websites, and some types of scientific modeling. They are available in multiple shapes and enable you to get approximately 3.8 gigahertz in all core turbo. We talked about memory optimized VMs. And these VMs are a great fit for your memory intensive workloads. They have a lot of sizes that go from one terabyte to approximately 12 terabytes today with more coming. They are a great fit for high end databases, in memory databases, as well as real time and in memory analytics. They also offer you great flexibility since you can always scale up or scale down or divide your commitments across them in different shapes and sizes. We also talked about preemptable VMs, which is really a simple flag that you can add to any VM type across the different types we talked about, regardless of your CPU and memory and performance requirements. And once you add that flag, you automatically get the most economic option for bursty, fault-tolerant workloads. This is a great fit if you're running a rendering job, a batch job, or some simulations that you just need compute for, but you don't care if it gets preempted and then continues to run again, and you have that kind of intelligence into your platform. So to summarize, Today, we really focus on how we can make some of your decision making simpler on Google Compute Engine by making sure that we always continue to focus on simplicity, flexibility, and efficiency. We talked about how you can use simple guidelines to make simple choices on whether you just want a wide range of flexible options with general purpose VMs, or you're looking for the most performant option available with compute optimized VMs. We also covered how for some of your very memory intensive applications with memory optimized shapes, you get the benefits of the cloud with the sizing that you're looking for. And you get a lot of benefits related to availability and flexibility, even as you go to these large sizes. We hope that, give, that that gives you a general overview into the options available for you and makes it a little bit easier to decide on what you're looking for on Google Compute Engine.